from a Rust perspective, where do you think the big sort of strengths are for building, I guess, backend services? And maybe what are some of the, I don't want to use the word weaknesses, but maybe where where Rust struggles. Okay, so on the you know on the positive side, um, Rust itself was started out as a basically a safety feature. Um, Mozilla Labs were having uh, loads of fun with memory safety and all sorts of things breaking horribly, and it started out as a side project and eventually started becoming part of Firefox, became its own big thing. And so building from the very beginning with a borrow checking system that prevents you from having data races, unsynchronized access to um, variables in memory. And then adding to that, <clears throat> um, it makes concurrency a lot easier because suddenly you um, don't, suddenly it, it won't compile if you're accessing your data in, um, insecurely. And on top of that, you've got years and years of learning with all the things that went horribly wrong with C, like strings that if you miss the zero on the end, you just keep reading. Um, right past the end of an array and corrupt your memory. And in the past, a lot of languages had solved that with garbage collectors. I mean, Java was the uh, poster child of that for a long time. And then Go came along and honestly did a really great job of taking care of most of the, you know, you don't, over, you don't overflow your buffer and suddenly somebody owns your server completely. Um, but Rust was positioned kind of lower on the stack. So, um, you know, Rust is where you want to be if you need to act actively control your memory, control your threads, control your green threading within those threads. Um, and so that leads to both a strength and a weakness. And the strength is you can really do anything. And the biggest weakness is that you can really do anything. Um, and you're going to have to spend the time to actually build the layers yourself sometimes. There's a really strong library system called Crates. Um, so you can put together a really high performance web server in about 20 lines of code. Um, but once you need that web server to do something really special, then you're going to be writing some, writing some code. And also, you know, a lot of people, their first reaction to the Rust syntax is, oh God, what am I looking at? And the reason for that is that the people who first came up with Rust really loved the ML series of functional languages, wanted something like that. But they also wanted to keep some bits of C and bits of Java and some C sharp type syntax started to sneak in. So you ended up with kind of a hybrid syntax. And so when I'm teaching the foundations class, the first thing is don't be don't be as terrified. They've it's it really is similar to what you see. It just looks very different. And uh, Rust really doesn't let you skip the steps. So if you need a thread, you need to create it, and you need to worry about what the what will happen when that thread finishes. Uh, some languages let you elide that a little bit. And Rust gives you all the tools you need. It just doesn't always make it as obvious as I'd like. And the one that always comes up is that uh, Go has an amazingly fast compiler and Rust really doesn't. Um, there are ways to tell you very quickly, oops, my syntax is bad. This isn't going to compile. But it does, uh, once you start getting into really big projects, um, running a build can uh, still be a bit longer than it should. It's getting better all the time, but right now it's um, occasionally a complete rebuild is copy break time. So I think that's right. probably... Yeah, that's awesome. The, the one program that I wrote that I kept asking you for help on wasn't a multi-threaded program, but you had to beat into my head several times this idea of pattern matching when it came oh, yeah. to like handling, when it came to these sort of templates. And maybe you talk a little bit about that because that seems to be a big part of the language. 